Right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar called How to Grow Your Gym with an Enhanced Facebook Page. Today's webinar is uh, something we've produced with our partners at Zen Planner, and uh, Kelly McEvitt is going to join me today. I want to thank her and the Zen Planner team for being a part of the webinar. Uh, just to introduce us, um, like I said, Kelly is here with us today. I'm going to ask her to talk a little bit about our, herself, and then I'll introduce uh, Matt and I as well. So go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, so I manage the social media channels at Zen Planner, and I am just really excited to share the social insight that we've gained working with um, tons of gym owners from a lot of different verticals. Great. Well, thanks again for being with us. And uh, later on the webinar, Matt Sharp is going to uh, join us to give you a walkthrough of Sweating Rules at the, at the very end of the webinar. Uh, Matt and I co-founded uh, Sweat Angels together, and he's spent a lot of time working with gym owners, so I'm sure you'll be interested to hear what he has to say about Sweat Angels if you're not a customer of ours already. And myself, I lead the marketing team at Sweat Angels, and we uh, spend a lot of our marketing efforts on Facebook, and uh, I'm just interested in uh, looking forward to sharing a little bit of what I've learned in uh, using Facebook uh, with you all today. So... Um, just a couple notes before we start. If you're interested in sharing uh, what you've learned, you can use the hashtag uh, SweatAngelsFB on Twitter. And if you want to mention Sweat Angels or Zen Planner in that tweet as well, uh, our handles are, are right here in front of you. And if you have questions that we're not able to answer on the, the webinar today, you're welcome to email uh, myself, John, at causely.com or Kelly at kelly.mcevitt at zenplanner.com. And just one more note, to keep things um, from getting too long today, we, we do want to welcome your questions, but we're going to respond to those uh, through the chat panel. Our uh, moderator, Brittany, will be looking at those and writing you answers as Kelly and I are speaking. That'll help us keep things uh, relatively brief and, and keep the webinar from going uh, too long. So if you do have questions, uh, ask them in the chat panel on the right. And if those aren't answered, feel free to email uh, Kelly or myself. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the webinar itself. And today, Kelly is going to walk you through uh, kind of all the tips and tricks of how to set up your Facebook page and really optimize it. But before we do that, I am uh, going to share a few reminders of why Facebook is really such a crucial part of, of marketing your gym. And there's a few stats we came across recently that, uh, that I came across that I'm going to share with you in a couple minutes. But just to preface that, um, it's important to keep in mind that um, for many people, all that they'll ever know about your gym is what they see on your Facebook page. So if they find out about your gym from a friend on, on Facebook and they head to your Facebook page, they will only know and they'll only um, experience what, what you provide to them. So if you've got a great profile picture, uh, lots of great content, all the information they need to, to learn about your gym, that's a great experience for them and they're much more likely to uh, come in and check it out and, and maybe join. But if you haven't really taken care of your page, if the uh, if the content isn't really geared towards your audience, um, then you know, you're know you going to turn people away. Uh, it's kind of like the first impression that people will have when they find out about you. So people will always look at your website. We're not dismissing the importance of a website. But for just again, for, for people who find out about you from their friends, they'll likely find out about you first on Facebook. So just remember that you're creating a a first impression for people that, um, you know, once that's established, it's very hard to undo. So, like I said, here's some kind of a good example and a bad example of a, of a Facebook page. Uh, Jim, no member is on the left, and this is a, a fictional page that we made up that we use for various purposes, but it's just not really exciting. There's the content. The last post was from a couple months ago. There's not much information about the gym. You've got one lonely guy there sitting on the bench by himself. It's not really an appealing uh, experience for someone. Uh, on the right hand is one of our own customers, Orange Theory Fitness in Jacksonville. They've done a great job. They're fostering likes, visits, reviews. They've got great content. Um, they've got their um, information. You can't see it on this page because we rented a space on the on the screen. But if you scroll down further, you can see pricing, hours, etc. And it's just a much better experience for someone. So later on the webinar, Kelly's going to show you how to get all that set up correctly. Um, so here's some of the stats that I wanted to share with you all, and maybe you've heard some of these before, but they're uh, they're always a good reminder. 
And this one always blows me away. It's that almost one and a half billion people in the world are on Facebook. And there's a lot of other growing apps out there, uh, other social networks, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp. But if you take all of those users combined, uh, it's still actually fewer than all, all of Facebook's uh, users. So kind of a mind-blowing stat there that's uh, you know, over a sixth of humanity on one social network. Another one that I'd like to reference is how much time people spend on Facebook. And for Americans, it's uh, about 40 minutes a day, and that's higher than any other, other social network. If you see Twitter and, uh, and Snapchat, they're you know, less than half, you know, 17 minutes each. Instagram's about half, about 21 minutes. So people are still spending plenty of time on Facebook, and uh, since that's so much greater than these other networks, that's not likely to change anytime soon. Another one that we, um, another question we get asked about a lot at Sweat Angels is, you know, what kind of people are on Facebook? And we uh, we did a little bit of research and we found that the actually the most common demographic is age 25 to 34. And if you're a gym owner and you're trying to attract new members, chances are that this is the demographic that you're targeting already. So your target group and Facebook's own audience uh, line up very nicely. And uh, this is probably my favorite one. We just came across this one a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we hear time and time again, uh, well, I heard that, you know, no one's on Facebook anymore. People are using Snapchat or Facebook's just for old people, you know, teens and, and college kids, young adults. They're on Instagram or they're on Snapchat or they're on Twitter. Facebook's kind of, kind of going away. And we hear that over and over again, but the data uh, shows that that's simply not true. Um, if you look at this graph on the on the bottom scale, going from left to right, is the percentage of uh, people in the U.S. between 18 and 34 who use all these social networks. So for Facebook, it's almost 100 percent, and it's way out there on the right in the top right corner. If you're if you missed it, if you look at Instagram and Twitter, they're hovering around 60, 70 percent. Snapchat is less than 40 percent. You can see the other networks there who get <clears throat> even less traffic. The other metric that's really interesting is the amount of time um, spent on each of these networks. So this is related to the graph we just looked at, but uh, this is the scale on the left-hand side of the, of the chart. So, and it's monthly minutes um, per visitor. So for Facebook, the average user between 18 and 34 is spending over a thousand minutes a month on the network. And the next closest competitor is Snapchat, which is just under 400 and Instagram is about 350. So millennials are spending about two and a half times um, amount of time, sorry, uh, on Facebook as they are any other social network. So if someone tells you that young, young people aren't using Facebook, they're only on these other so social networks, it's just a myth. It's not really true. And the other thing to keep in mind along uh, these lines is that just because someone uses Snapchat and, and just because they use Instagram, it doesn't mean that they don't use Facebook. Most of us use multiple social networks. We use them for different reasons. So uh, the growth of other networks like Snapchat and Instagram, they're not necessarily a threat to, to Facebook per se. They're more of a, uh, a sign that people are using more and more social networks and they're spending more time on social media in general. Another one I found interesting uh, that I wanted to share was uh, why people like a Facebook page. Uh, the number one reason, as it turns out, is to support a brand that they like. So if, uh, if your members want to support you, you know, liking your page is, is one way to do that. And I, I won't go into the other um, stats here, but um, if you want to spend some time looking through these on your own, uh, let me know. I can send you the link to the original article. And then uh, another one we hear a lot is, is Facebook likes. So you hear one of two things. The, someone who's kind of coming from the old Facebook world will say, you know, how can I get more likes on my Facebook page? I want more likes. And we can talk about this um, in depth on, on another webinar, but the fact of the matter is likes don't matter the way that they used to be. It used to mean that if you had you know, a thousand likes and you made a Facebook post, then maybe a thousand people would see that post. Uh, today, only about 10% of your audience will see that, that content, uh, more or less depending on how good face, Facebook thinks your content is. But likes don't necessarily equate to people seeing your content. So they don't matter in the way that they used to. Um, but they do serve a different purpose today, and that's th through providing social proof. So I screenshotted a couple posts um, that I found on my own newsfeed. 
Um, <clears throat> one is a, a page from a restaurant nearby called Malone's, and another is uh, an ad I saw for um, a pair of headphones. And in each of these, you can see that Facebook has added some social context. So my friend Gerald, he likes this uh, company that's making headphones. And looks like James and eight of my other friends like Malone's. So when I see content that these uh, posts uh, are publishing, um, I'm getting s signals from Facebook that's saying, hey, your, your friends like this content. And for most of us, that's a lot more meaningful than you know, the content from the post itself. But seeing that our friends like this content is a very, very strong signal um, uh, to say that this is something that I might be interested in. So as you're posting content for your gym, um, or if you're running ads for your gym, or you're getting people to check in at your gym, Facebook is going to add this, uh, this social context for posts when it's seen by people who don't already like your page. So the more likes you get, the more chance um, you have of providing that kind of social uh, cue to someone when they see your content for the first time. Uh, one final point I want to make, and it's related to Facebook advertising. Um, it used to be that Facebook advertising was fairly inexpensive. And if you wanted to grow your gym or any business through that means, it was pretty affordable to do so. Um, but the demand for Facebook advertising has dramatically increased over the years. And you can see these year-over-year -year, um, cost increases for, for uh, running Facebook advertising. So anymore, in, unless you really know what you're doing with Facebook advertising, it's, it's a very easy way to throw your money away and not see any results. Um, we do a lot of Facebook advertising ourselves, but we have a whole team that's dedicated to that, and we kind of live, eat, and breathe Facebook. But if you're trying to do it on the side and you don't have a um, lot, lot of expertise in terms of how the platform works, it, it can become very expensive. Um, the reason I'm mentioning that is um, because it's, it's harder to be successful advertising, it means that your organic content or the, the content that you're not paying to promote it needs to be that much more effective. Your Facebook page needs to be that much more effective. Um, it needs to be optimized in a way to get as many leads as possible before you spend those ad dollars. So we don't have that easy solution of just kind of throwing at money at the problem anymore. You really need to optimize your page and create great content um, because, like I said, ads are just uh, a tough game to play. So we're going to switch gears a little bit, and Kelly is going to walk you through um, all the tips and trip tricks on optimizing your Facebook page. And just to give you kind of a preview of what she's going to cover, uh, we've, we've listed this out here for you. So she's going to talk about how uh, configuring your page um, the right way can get you found on Facebook, um, how people can check into your page, um, how to use calls to action on Facebook to generate leads. Um, Kelly's going to talk a little bit about the, the Pages mobile app that you may not have heard of, but it's a great way to respond to uh, uh, questions and comments on your page. She's going to tell you how to connect your Instagram account, account excuse me, uh, share pricing and hours right on your page, uh, feature videos, showcase reviews, um, and even use page roles and notifications to really um, you know, stay in tune with what's happening on your page. So uh, without further ado, I'll hand things over to Kelly, who's going to walk you through the basics of getting started. Great. Thanks, Sean, for that introduction. You bet. So... Um, it is likely that your business already has a Facebook page created, which is great. Uh, it's good to have a Facebook presence already. If you are just starting out um, building a Facebook page, it is pretty easy to get started. Um, you can create a page pretty easily right from your personal profile and then start building out the uh, details behind your business your business name, your location, um, and then it kind of moves you through the process, um, building a profile photo and a cover photo. But really, we are going to um, get into managing your Facebook page um, as if you have it already created, but you're just looking for some key tips to enhance it and really optimize it to help your page be found on Facebook and also in web searches. So the Facebook profile photo 
in the cover photo. This is the first thing that people see when they get to your page. Um, people are going to use this to recognize your brand um, and really connect the dots. You know, maybe they visited your uh, gym and they, you know, want to connect with you on Facebook. So they search you and your page comes up. If they can't recognize that you are the brand that they interacted with earlier, they're not going to make the connection and you are likely not going to get that chance to engage with them. So it's really important to have both your profile photo and your cover photo be very cohesive and have clear branding. Focusing on the profile photo, this is a great place to showcase your logo. Um, keeping it very simple but recognizable is key here. Um, if you think about where this profile photo is used um, and most seen is usually in the newsfeed. So if people are following your brand on Facebook and then see a post from you in their newsfeed, if they can quickly recognize your logo and connect the dots, okay, this is coming from Jane's gym, then you know they're gonna be more likely to engage with your content. So having that profile photo really recognizable and pretty clear um, is a great idea. This is not a, a good place to showcase um, you know, photos of your group, um, while that is okay, it just doesn't, um, have the same effect as a logo. The cover photo is a great place to showcase a little bit more about your brand. So this is a spot where you can have a photo of, um, some of your members or an event that you've been to, um, just more more description into what your brand is all about. Um, it's also a good idea if you, you can see in this example here that Orange Theory is keeping their profile photo and their cover photo very cohesive um, and very on brand. So they're keeping that orange theme throughout um, to avoid confusion and really just give their page a... Um, Again, a very cohesive feel. Okay, so now we can move into um, Facebook check-ins. This is another um, opportunity for you to really get a lot of engagement with your page from people who you wouldn't normally. Um, as John had mentioned earlier with um, likes. Check-ins serve to um, build credibility on Facebook and get your brand visibility where they where you wouldn't normally. Um, so this is a huge opportunity for you to encourage your members to check into your location on Facebook or tag you when they are at um, a business event. This just um, kind of paints a picture for their followers of what they're up to and what gym they frequent and what they enjoy doing. And it really builds that credibility for your brand. You know, if Jane is working out every day at your gym and, you know, posting about it a couple times a week, people are going to start to notice and maybe they will check out your gym the next time they're thinking about, um, you know, trying something new. So really encouraging your members to check in to your business on Facebook is huge. The call to action button is also another great opportunity for your business. And this is something that hasn't been around a long time on Facebook, but it's really something that has proved um, really beneficial for businesses. This is the call to action button that exists under the cover photo. And this is really just a key place um, 
when people come and visit your page is right in the forefront of their vision. Um, and really is just a great opportunity to drive traffic to your website or, you know, drive a variety of different actions. The great thing about this call to action is that Facebook provides choices. So you can see they offer options to call directly, call you directly from Facebook, um, watch a video, um, click to learn more. There's a variety of uses for this call to action. Um, but really it's a great opportunity for you to um, get people to you know, move along and really consider your business as um, an option for them. And the great thing about the call to action as well is that you can change it out. So maybe you put together a video um, with your members or your staff really showcasing what your gym is all about. Um, this would be a great place to put the call to action you can put the call to action with this video um, and really try to drive video views. And then let's say two months down the road, you really are trying to um, drive people to your contact page and you know fill out a form with their questions or to contact your company. You can switch up the call to action for whatever you are, um, whatever your goals are at the moment. So it's a, it's a great way to um, really increase your site traffic. Okay, so moving into page management. Um, page roles are great for your staff members that will be using Facebook um, for your brand. So um, going into each different role, um, it's likely that you you know, have a couple people working on your social strategy, um, or you could just have one person who is, um, you know, the only person in there um, publishing posts or responding to messages. So it's great that Facebook gives you the option to um, customize your roles based on what your staff will be doing for your Facebook page. So really just paying attention to, um, Daily responsibilities is key. If you have somebody who is responsible for solely launching advertisements, then maybe the advertiser is the correct role. If you have somebody who is responding to messages and um, viewing insights, really just monitoring the page, the admin role is great. And this is something that you can change throughout the life of the page. So if you have someone new on staff that you have to add, um, these page roles can easily be changed um, and managed very easily with the Facebook page settings. With um, page management also comes monitoring. One of the biggest lessons um, with Facebook management is to monitor your page frequently and pay very close attention to the messages that you're receiving, the visitor posts that you get daily, the reviews that are coming in. A lot of businesses make the mistake in thinking that they can build out their Facebook page, post a couple times a week, and then not pay attention to it. Um, while it may take a little bit more time to um, be monitoring your page and checking for messages, it's extremely important. Facebook users are very accustomed to um, posting a comment on a, a post or sending in a message to a brand and getting a response fairly quickly. Facebook actually has a badge that you can receive for responding to messages quickly. If you can get to them in, I believe it's 15 minutes or less, um, they give you a badge that you can 
use across your online marketing to show that you are a very responsive business and that you really care about your members' happiness. So really paying attention to those things is key and notifications are a huge help. So within the page settings, um, if you click to notifications and then you'll see a very similar screen to this, just making sure that you have notifications set up for actions on your page, um, whether it's every action that you receive or um, a recap, it's just important to pay attention to what's happening on your page day to day. So moving into the more fun aspect, <laughs> Instagram. Um, as John had mentioned, Instagram is one of the social media channels that is growing quite a bit along with Snapchat. Um, while it's not quite as big as Facebook, especially with the millennials, it is growing hugely. Uh, mentioned here, Instagram is expected to grow 15.1% this year. Um, and you can compare that to just the 3.1% expected growth for other social networks. It is a big part of social media. And having Instagram featured on your Facebook page is a huge opportunity to expand your followers on that channel as well. Um, so Insta so um, connecting your Instagram account um, is relatively easy. Um, that is also managed in the page settings, and you can um, simply add your Instagram account um, by entering your username and password, and then it will provide um, an Instagram tab to the right of your Facebook page. And with Facebook and Instagram so uh, closely connected, um, Facebook owns Instagram you have the opportunity to advertise on Instagram just as you would uh, with Facebook advertising. So you can use the same interface for both. Um, and it's really just great to have Instagram and Facebook um, connected. The user base is fairly similar. Um, Instagram has that very, well, it's growing. Um, the demographic is expanding into uh, the older demographics, but really is key in the um, 18 to 35. Um, and just great for sharing a lot of your um, happenings day to day. And it's a great place to showcase content that you wouldn't on Facebook. Video is also another great opportunity that businesses should be taking advantage of on Facebook. Um, as you can see, video Facebook posts have a 135% greater organic reach posts than photo posts. Um, and that's also in comparison with text posts. And if you think about it, scrolling through your newsfeed, um, you know, you see pictures or simple text posts, a video is gonna stand out in the newsfeed. And if someone takes the time to hit the play button on your video, that is a huge opportunity to engage them for a long time in comparison with a photo post. So let's say somebody watches this video about CrossFit Krypton. They could be engaged for the entire two minute video. They could be engaged for 15 seconds. Doesn't matter that is longer than somebody would likely be engaged with a photo post or a text post. So this is a huge opportunity for your followers to really spend the time engaging with your brand. And while videos do take a little bit more time to put together, uh, to upload, to really compile, the benefit is there. So you know, take some time to maybe put together a video about your gym, maybe your staff or an event that you had last weekend. Doesn't have to be difficult. Um, yesterday we did a push up challenge for um, the Navy SEAL Foundation. 
did a quick mobile video, uploaded it to Facebook, and we already have a ton of views. Um, a photo post just couldn't do the same thing that a video would. And Kelly, you mentioned events. One feature that gym owners may want to try out is a relatively new one related to video. It's called live videos. And if you've ever used Periscope or seen a Periscope video, uh, you'll know what it's like. But this allows you to post a, a live video right on Facebook. And so if you've got an event or just something happening that's very timely um, and don't want to worry about um, you know, editing it and producing it later and you know have people feel like they're missing out after the event already took place, live video is a great way to do that. I've not tried it myself, so I can't speak to it at length, but I've seen some people I follow on Facebook uh, start to play around with it. So if you're curious and you want to try something really new, uh, Facebook live video is a nice thing to start. Yeah. The Facebook live video is a great opportunity as well to get the conversation going. Um, it shows when people um, join the live video and, you know, conversations are happening in real time as that video is happening. So it's, it's just a very interactive tool. All right. And reviews. This is also um, another piece of your Facebook page that you should be spending a great deal of time on. While it doesn't take a lot of time to manage, um, it's something that is key for your page. Um, a lot of businesses don't expect that their social followers are going to Facebook to look at reviews. They're assuming that you know, their reviews on Yelp or Google Plus or other review sites are more important, and that's simply not true. As John had mentioned, um, Facebook really is the first step for a lot of people before they make a purchase, and they are going to pages to look at the reviews to really assess whether um, joining the gym or, you know, buying a TV is from that brand is really the best option. So paying close attention to the reviews that your page is getting and responding in a timely manner is really important. And also encouraging your members to uh, review your business is key. You know, if a member comes up to you and they say, man, we love the setup that you um, have created at the gym and, you know, all the staff, they're just so great. And I, I love coming here every day. And, you know, this is just one of my favorite places. That's so great to hear that face-to-face -face review, but also take that and use that advocate and request that they write a review for you on Facebook. Those advocates can be hugely helpful for your brand and really build up your credibility on Facebook. Another great addition to Facebook um, as of last week is Messenger Codes. So um, Facebook announced these last week and they're a new way to conduct transactions with your customers. Um, these messenger links can be um, created to uh, link with your Facebook page um, and are a great way to uh, make it easier for your members to engage with your social channels. So you can create these links and include them on your Facebook ads, put them on your website or your other marketing channels. And Facebook users can scan the code and, uh, you know, follow you on Facebook or start a transaction. Um, Mark Zuckerberg bought flowers from 1-800-Flowers through a code, um, through one of these Facebook codes. So really, it's just about making the um, communication easier with brands, um, transactions easier, really um, it's really just an, a great interactive um, tool and it is available um, for brands to immediately create and download. So this is something that you could build 
and start implementing throughout your marketing strategy. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for walking us through that. There was tons of valuable advice in there. And I'll just remind everyone that if there was a question that we didn't get to address today, uh, just due to time constraints, feel free to email uh, Kelly or I, and we'll be happy to respond right away. Uh, I do want to thank you for watching today. Um, and I also want to thank our team, sorry, our partners at the Zen Planner team uh, for helping us put this together and promote the webinar. If you stick around for a few minutes, Matt Sharp is going to join us and he's going to give you a walkthrough about sweat angels and show you how it works and why you might want to consider it for your gym. And if you stick around to the end, we have a special offer that we're going to provide just for attendees of this webinar. So uh, without further ado, here's Matt to tell you a little bit more about sweat angels. And uh, Kelly, thanks again for being with us today. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Hey guys, it is Matt from Sweat Angels. I'm going to take a few minutes to walk you through the program and how it works and kind of how we got started. I know that you guys are really busy, so I'm going to keep this as short, as sweet as possible. So really quick, in the next few minutes, we're going to go through why Facebook check-ins are crucial for getting referrals, how they've helped us uh, increase the size of, of our community and our gym, how, how Sweat Angels combines marketing with giving back. This is kind of our secret sauce why thousands of gym owners use Sweat Angels. Uh, we just hit 3,000 locations, so uh, pumped about that. Plus a special gift at the end. So basically, if you stay to the end, you get dessert. All right, so let's get started. So Sweat Angels is designed to help gym, owner, gym owners generate friend-to-friend -friend referrals at scale. We do that through Facebook check-ins. The reason that a Facebook check-in is so important for your business, and we've seen this at our own business as well, each check-in is seen by about 200 to 400 friends every time that that check-in happens. And it's not only seen by lots and lots of friends, but it also provides a lot of really valuable information for your business. So on that check-in, if you guys see these on the news feed, if you had your phone out, it provides not only the personal referral, so it's going to say who checked in, and the people that are going to see that are friends of that person and trust that person. It's going to show a link to your Facebook page with your business logo. So this is also what will encourage businesses to have a really clear logo so that it's, it's easily identified in the newsfeed. The name, the logo, the ratings, the where, where it is or where the business is located on the map. And what's really, really cool, and we've seen this ourselves, is that if a friend clicks on that, they go straight to that business's Facebook page. And we'll also encourage businesses to have some um, some kind of good landing page-ish material waiting for new visitors there and to make sure all their information is correct on their page. Because when somebody does check in and a friend sees it and clicks on it, you want all that information to be correct. We've seen several times where a, somebody would check in and a friend clicked on the check-in and the second click was on the phone number for the gym and they called the gym directly. So within two clicks of seeing the check-in, they call the gym correctly. So uh, it works really, really well, but we want to make sure all you, you have all the correct information on the Facebook page. Facebook check-ins are the most powerful way to grow through word of mouth. And one of the reasons uh, that that is, is because they come from a friend. So I'll, we'll talk about, we'll go right into like how exactly does Sweat Angels generate more Facebook check-ins. And our secret sauce is that every time a member checks in on Facebook, we make a donation to a great cause. So you'll see this over and over and over again when you see our when you see people that are members of Sweat Angel Gyms, they'll frequently mention the charity or the charitable output when they check in. So this month we're seeing a lot of uh, hashtag autism awareness or hashtag autism April, things like that when people are checking in. So why is it important to support causes? Supporting causes is the is an effective and authentic way of encouraging action. And like you see on here, 83% of Americans wish that businesses they supported would wish wish that businesses they patronize would support cause. So that that's a that's a really compelling number for a business owner to understand that if I, if 83% of Americans wish that you supported cause, anything that you can do to make your business more attractive is something that you should be interested in. So for us, uh, I know that when we started. We had done some fundraisers. We had done some kind of hit and miss uh, charitable stuff, but we we hadn't made like doing good part of the DNA of our business. And you know, one of the things that was really cool, with Sweat Angels, is when we launched it, 
it, it doing good became part of our business. It was deeply ingrained. And literally every time somebody came to the gym, they were able to do something good. And that really aligned with kind of our purpose of, of the business and made us feel a lot better about what we were doing. Causes engage athletes. So this is a really cool check in here. Mission Bayho uh, is, is a customer of ours and uh, a partner of ours. And this was, there's a couple of cool things that happened in this post here. So Mission Bayho posted this and you can see, you know, it got some likes, which is cool, which also increases the reach. But you see the first two posts, those are from members of that gym. So when they posted that, what, what Facebook does is every time somebody engages with a post, it's going to increase the reach of that post. And when somebody engages with a post, Facebook is sometimes likely to share that post with friends of that person. So this uh, Mara Lucia Landau, I, I, if you're on this uh, webinar, I apologize for messing your name up horribly. Um, if, if she, she's only, the only reason she's seeing this post is because she's friends of one of those two people that either commented or she's friends with somebody that liked the post. She was not a fan of this page, but still Facebook showed this to her because friends of hers have engaged with it. And then it gets really cool. So after she says she wants to try it, the, the community kind of gets together and really starts talking her into it. And this is, this is what, this is gold on the newsfeed here. You know, I want to try this out and instantly your clients or Mission Bayho's clients turn into ambassadors and they're like, come on, try it out. I love this place. Um, this stuff is gold. So when this happened, we wanted to make sure we captured it and this stuff happens all the time, but it was really cool to capture one where you could see it. Another reason is it creates loyal members. So, our posts tend to get really, really high engagement. So even when we had very, very few fans, uh, sweat angels, we would share these things and they were just such compelling stories that the reach and the shares and the likes were just pretty much astronomical for the amount of fans that we had. So you can see this video, we put, we published this, uh, near the end of February, we were working with Watsi to correct, uh, children's eye vision and this post, uh, so Gracie, our Grace was a, uh, she works for Watson and she did this video for us. And what was really cool was that, that she was able to talk kind of directly to the, the partners that we work with and their clients. And if you can see 66,000 people reached 1,048 shares, which is just unreal. And you can even, you can even go through the comments there and see how, and if you guys are, you guys can go check this post out on our Facebook page live if you want as well. But these, these posts just tend to do really, really well. Here's another, here's another example of, uh, Diana, who's kind of a sweat angel queen for us. She's been, she's been a member of the program since I think the second or third month we launched it, but she's always been, uh, kind of best in class for how to, how to make this program run. So she would have some of these, uh, promotional materials up in the gym, or she would talk about them on her Facebook page. So what you see on the right is is one of is a piece of promotional material that we would work with her to publish either like i said in the gym or somewhere online and then that would encourage her members to check in and it's really cool to see her checking in as well and kind of leading the charge for the memberships so sounds complicated right but no we do everything for you basically and we provide you with everything you need to get your members excited about checking in so what exactly is that so here's a, here's a image of our launch kit. So there's, there's, there's a couple of, there's a couple of pieces of what we do here. So print signage. So print signage is going to be things that are going to go, they're physical materials that are going to go up in the gym. So these will be posters, decals for your doors that remind people to check in. The reason those are important is because when somebody's coming into the gym, it reminds them when somebody's leaving, it reminds them. A lot of times people are on their phone when they get out of their car. They're checking text messages either on their way in or on the way out of the gym. And that's a really good time to remind them. Uh, so that's where the decals come in. Posters are kind of in strategic locations throughout the gym. Uh, one of the coolest things that we do by far is the digital signage though. Um, that what you're seeing on here is kind of a mock-up of it, but it's a 10 inch digital display that is connected to Wi-Fi. So it's going to show your members in real time, what you're supporting and give them updates on how much good has been done. So, at our gyms, we put this right by the front desk. So when they come in, they check into class, 
they're, they see pictures of who they're supporting this month and it provides them with updates. And that does a couple things for us. It, it allows us to not rely so much on the staff to every time somebody comes in, they don't have to say, hey, Bill, did you check in? Hey, Timmy, did you check in? Um, it, it gives them a very easy visual reminder as they come in and as they leave the gym every day. And because it's constantly changing, it helps encourage them to look at it. Um, so we love that. And a lot of times we'll see staff that will just say, hey, did you see what we're doing this month? And they'll just kind of point at it. So we love that part of it. The other cool part of what we do is is digital content. So we have what's called a content pack that's sent out around 10 to 7 days before each, the beginning of each month. And it literally walks you through step by step everything you need to do as far as sweat angels to, to, get, uh, to get this out to the masses and get people excited about it. So included in that is Facebook posts, Facebook videos. Um, at the top is what we call an owner tools video. So in an owner tools video, we will actually create a video. We create it in the office here. So we create that video for you and it's kind of a, a, a us to you message. And it's like, dear owner, this is what we're doing this month. And these are the things we're going to send you. The, this is the information about the nonprofit we're supporting. And it's just really, really cool info. And it gives you kind of the foundation for launching the cause that month. And then underneath that is all of the shareable content. We give you content to print off and put up throughout the gym. And we even write emails for you to the staff. So we have a lot of gyms that have tons and tons of staff. So instead of them having to go over this in a staff meeting or make sure that everyone understands, we write an email for them to the staff that clearly lays out the causes for the month and what they're going to be supporting. So, and answers some of the questions that might come up uh, if a client says, hey, what's the deal with this charity or, or you know, who's the charity this month? You know, we answer all those things in that email. And then for gems that have email lists or newsletters, we write emails to the community for you. And we write the newsletter blurb for you. So we try to make it as easy as possible. And, you know, the, the whole point of that is that our content makes it easy for you guys to get your members engaged. We spend lots and lots of time and effort on making amazing content. So I would encourage you, so the Sweat Angels video you see on the far left for April, that was one of our favorite videos. So I would encourage you to go check that video out if, if you can sometime. Uh, that was actually a mom that has a son that is, has um, dealt with autism and is and the son's life was changed through autism therapy. So she felt very passionate about kind of helping us make that video that month. So these videos are super cool. And you can see the engagements through the roof because members love this stuff. So we also make it easy to track. So you'll have a dashboard that lists out exactly how many people check in, how many people have seen those check-ins, how many likes you've gotten, list all that stuff out very, very easily. Um, you can see that stuff in real time. If you're the type of person that likes to hit click and refresh, it's always there. If you're the person that hates doing that, we send you a report at the end of the month. So what you see over here on the right is the monthly recap. So that's even a mobile version that you would get at the end of the month that kind of walks you through everything that happened that month in a really like light and easy high level way. Uh, one cool thing on the left is we now have uh, a live feed. So if you have somewhere that you would want to uh, push a live feed to a digital display or, or uh, internet TV, we have that option now. And a lot of our gyms really love that. So um, that shows in real time how many check-ins you guys have this month. So at the end of the day, it's just very, very easy to track and, and keep track of what's going on. So one of, the, one of the things that's the most valuable about what we do is that we're not generating content as the business the users are generating content for us. So um, we found that that, it, that just performs so much better because people trust their friends. They don't trust us yet. Uh, our members trust us and they love us, but um, their friends don't trust us yet. So and a lot of times their friends don't even know about us unless we can get them to check in. So I love, and, and I think that a lot of the gym owners we work with, they love that the, the, the content is generated by the clients. And one of the reasons that it's so cool is because because it's generated by the clients, it's unique and it's organic. And, you know, the client will say, you know, great class today with Coach Ben or, you know, amazing Saturday workout with my three best friends, uh, hashtag sweat angels. And then they'll tag three of those friends. So that's not content that we're making them do. So it's just really cool to see them generating content for us. 
and we've really, you know, through the program, we've really turned our members into a content generating machine. So that that has been one of the things I think that has set us apart from any other type of marketing is that our users do this for us. Like we turn our members into ambassadors. They're not, you know, we're not pushing content onto their friends that is unwanted. So how does it work? Let's go through it. Three easy steps. Step one, members see the Sweat Angels content and are reminded to check in for charity. They're also told about it in class. They see stuff online, but at the end of the day, they learn about the program. They check in. Those check-ins are seen by 200 plus of their friends. This high, this number goes as high as 600, what we see. 200 is very uh, conservative. Um, but at the end of the day, they get inspired. They check in. And step three, super complicated. Friend-to-friend -friend referrals are generated through these check-ins. When their friends check in, or when, when a member checks in, their friends learn about you, just like you saw earlier in the uh, news feed of that check-in. So usually anytime we work with somebody, they'll see a major increase in referrals. So here's a couple of like high level stats for you. This is Diana from earlier. These are impressions from check-ins. So nice uh, curve, curvature up to the right with the big red bars there. Um, for a gym that's pretty small, and I think at the time Diana was three, or maybe two or 300 members, to reach this many people per month through Facebook is pretty amazing. This is a UFC gym that we work with. Larry's been a big fan. This is uh, Todd Adamson, who's seen a huge increase uh, with his Facebook traffic since starting. So just to kind of wrap, start wrapping some of this stuff up, every month Sweat Angels generates, and, and these numbers will probably be outdated by the time, you know, a week from now, 300,000 Facebook check-ins, 60, 60 million friend-to-friend -friend referrals, and, you know, these, this is monthly, 60,000 in donations to great charities because we do, we do a different cause every month like you guys have heard about. Here are, few, here are a few of our nonprofit partners. So we only work with the best of the best. Our background is in working with nonprofits. So we have to make sure that everybody we work with is a legit nonprofit, that the money is going to what we call designated funding. So designated funding means if we give you Ten thousand dollars to buy shoes. You have to spend that money on buying shoes. So we we can. There's some amazing charities that can't do that, but for what we do, and what we do with our partners, they have to be that specific. So these are these are fairly big name charities. I'm sure you um, you guys recognize a lot of these. So next six months. So one of the things that's really cool is that we as we've grown, we've been able to kind of spec out and roadmap uh, much further ahead of time who we're going to be supporting. So I don't need to read all these out to you, but you can see every month has a, a cause. Um, May is a good month for us to help support moms. So that's why prenatal vitamins is there. And usually in August, we help build schools. So you're going to see a lot of themes throughout the year. Um, we'll, we'll try to time those up with themes of months to kind of get a lot of that cross promotion going on. All those check-ins do provide a massive impact because when you add everybody's check-ins up, like no one gym donates a lot, but when you add all those up, you can actually make some pretty big impact. So this is kind of a screenshot of our wall of giving, and you guys can see that, on, I think, on our Facebook page and on our website. But we go all the way back to 2013 showing exactly who we've supported and how much, how much we've, or sorry, what nonprofit we supported and exactly what was donated. So we're very, very, very transparent. We have very good relationships with these nonprofits. And it's, it's another, it's another thing. It's another thing that kind of displays the value that we bring is that we vet and sign legal agreements and work very closely with these nonprofits and it gives act. We help give access to these two smaller businesses. Normally, um, these nonprofits wouldn't give this type of access to small businesses. But because we all kind of band together, we get some we get some really cool access, like videos and photos of the kids we've helped, of the animals we rescued, and that stuff is just really compelling uh, for our partners and and for their members. So at the end of the day, Sweat Angels is a done for you service. We give you the monthly cause announcement videos to share with your community. We donate all the we we make all the donations on your behalf. We give you the digital signage and update that automatically through the month. So that's that digital content that uh, that's that digital screen that I was showing you that's set on the front counter. So that once you connect that to your Wi-Fi, you never have to touch that again. 
We also give you the digital content subscription. So when I was walking you through all the things we give you to post, um, so underneath the owner tools video, we give you uh, all the videos to post, the images to post, both on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, and Instagram. So all of that stuff is part of it. We only work with the best nonprofits and give you access to them. And for the best non for the for the kind of the best performers, we even get like one on one thank yous for those guys. But we, in general, uh, will get a thank you message from our nonprofit partners, which is really cool to connect uh, your small business with that nonprofit. And then we track everything for you automatically and give you a live dashboard that shows you the results of your involvement. Um, one of the things I'm probably most proud of is that we have the best coaches in the world. So once somebody signs up with us and becomes a partner, we, we connect them to one of our onboarding coaches, and that onboarding coach is obsessed with making you a success. So our onboarding coaches are the best that I've ever seen, and you know we give out our cell phone numbers. Uh, personally, like every we give you everything we can to make sure that you are successful with the program. We work very closely with every owner because uh, every owner has their own kind of specific needs, so we work very close, closely with them to make sure they're a success. So we do believe that we're the most cost-effective way to generate interest in the gym. And, um, you know, me personally, we launched it at, at our gym a few years ago. And, you know, this is, this is a project that's just very close to my heart. And it's just been amazing to see it grow and, and see all these amazing owners that we work with. So just the fact that we've been able to do good while we've grown the business has been a huge win for us and really aligns with our mission as a company. So... On to the good stuff. Web, web, webinar attendees get a special offer. Um, so because you stuck it out and listened to me ramble a little bit, you get a one free month of Sweat Angels if you request a demo. Um, somewhere there's going to be a button where you click. Uh, one, Brittany's going to make some magic happen. And if you click that button, you're going to be connected with us uh, immediately. And you can also uh, go to our website. Uh, it's causely.com slash sweat angels. And that's our number. So if you call that number, one of us will pick up and talk to you um, today. So like I said, I appreciate your time. Uh, if you guys have any questions or, or about the program or comments, please feel free to reach out and let us know and uh, look forward to speaking with you. Thank you guys.